The weekly infection growth rate for COVID-19 is on the rise since restrictions were eased three weeks ago. It's a key indicator used to assess Singapore's COVID-19 situation. Now, since the 29th of March, social gatherings have been allowed for up to 10 people and mask wearing is no longer required outdoors. The ratio is close to one. That's an increase from around 0.7 when restrictions were first eased. A ratio above one means that those infections are rising. It's now at 0.92 as of today. Now, for more on this, let's speak with infectious diseases expert, Dr. Leong Ho Nam. Good evening, Dr. Leong. At this pace, the, the rise that we're seeing, how likely is it going to be that we'll see infection growth rates go beyond one anytime soon? And if we do, why? Let's be realistic. We are going to hit one. And in fact, I think it will hover at a number between 0 0.9 to 1.1. We are fortunate. If we're less fortunate, it be 0 0.8 to 1.2. Historically, every city, every country that opens up, the reproductive rate will go up. That is expected. And when Singapore opened up with greater, bigger uh, openings and more gatherings, and then we are allowing travellers to come in and Singaporeans to go out for their travel binge, we do expect numbers of cases to go up. So I do expect one to 3,000 cases daily going forwards, and that's expected. And that's not going to be the end of the story. You see, all of us who have been infected with COVID-19 can be infected again. The protection is only for about 90 days and thereafter you can be infected again. Indeed, we are seeing people who have had Delta infections falling sick with Omicron. That's expected. And going forwards, those who have an Omicron infection at the very beginning of the epidemic will get more uh, will get reinfected with again subsequently. And the third factor, which is very important, is the virus hasn't decided on its final stage yet. As if I know the final strain, we know about BA1, BA2, and BA2 being the dominant strain now, but in, in South Africa, there's BA5, in UK, there is XE strain, and in US, there is a BA2121. So in, the, the race for the top, the race for the number one virus for the Omicron strain is not over yet, and I think this will add in further pressure, and in turn, we would expect a reproductive rate of going up to 1 to 1.1 again shortly. Dr. Leong, we're well into this era of living with COVID, of accepting COVID as an endemic disease. So do these numbers matter? Is there an acceptable rate or a level that you would be looking at? That's a great question. If you really want to live with endemic COVID-19, uh, the numbers don't make sense anymore because it will be like the common cold, it will be like the influenza, where you're going to get cases every day. So that number, the daily numbers, don't matter to me. I don't really look at it there. I don't really even look at the infectious ratio because it's more for policy making. The, th the numbers which I'm really looking at is the hospitalization, the death rates, as well as those who actually uh, require high uh, intensive care, the severe diseases. So those would actually matter because you would put a strain on the healthcare system. So going forwards, we should even forget the numbers which we are counting. We should forget this infectious rate, but just look at the ICU rate, look at the hospitalization rate. In turn, we can actually expect and anticipate What's the demands for the hospital? And should those numbers on hospitals and on the ICU units uh, be impacted, if we should see them uh, coming under some strain as we have in the past, how do you think that's going to impact Singapore's reopening plans and the issue of mask wearing? Okay, mask wearing, um, the ministers have said that it will be one of the last things to go away. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that's reasonable. In fact, I, I'm very pleased with Singaporeans who are keeping their distance even though, and still keeping their masks on even though they're out in the open. I, I think that's being responsible. So I'm very, very grateful to many Singaporeans who are doing that. But going forwards, if there's a new variant, and I'm very sure there'll be a new variant that uh, supersedes in transmissions in BA2, we'll see that. Uh, and keeping the incubation period to even one to two days, then we're going to see a huge spike in numbers again. Now, we shouldn't 
panic, we shouldn't reactively uh, restrict our movements again or close borders again, but we should look at the hospitalization rates and again the death rates and ICU rates. Then we'll decide if we actually have to take back some of the measures. Um, the, one of the easiest things to do is actually just enforce strict mask wearing at all circumstances. Again, we do not increase opening. We don't have bigger gatherings. We just maintain everything in status quo. And we saw it. We saw it in many other countries, including Hong Kong, which had a huge spike of several thousands a day. The numbers will eventually come down. So all of us need to huddle through. There'll be a huge spike and thereafter they'll come down quickly. Thank you, Dr. Long. We're going, to, we're going to come back to you in, in a moment. But before we do that, uh, let's get over to Sir Hui, who's going to tell us about other infectious diseases that they are too on the rise. Thanks, Don. Yes, other infectious diseases seem to be also on the rise. Now, this chart here shows more people are seeking treatment for acute respiratory infection or flu-like illnesses this year compared to the same time last year. Now, in February, numbers came close to the 3,500 mark. And then for waterborne infections like typhoid, now, weekly cases also nearly doubled to around three each in February and April compared to last year. And cholera cases also appeared between March and April this year when there were no cases during the same period last year. And now the biggest difference was for cases of hand, foot and mouth disease that have so far nearly quadrupled since the start of the year. For example, in week seven, there were 11 cases. That's the highest number both this year and last year. Now back to you, Don. Thanks, Sir Hui. Dr. Long, back to you. Uh, just very briefly, why are we seeing more of these cases of these kinds of infectious diseases? Great spotting on the part of CNA then. Number one, we're going to see a lot more because of travel. You eat the food outside Singapore, you're going to bring the diseases outside Singapore back in, into Singapore, and that's cholera. We're getting a lot more movement and with school reopening, etc. Then with the children interacting, you get hand foot mouth disease at the same time. Flu was practically absent last year throughout the world, but it's coming back with a vengeance and it's hitting the community, which actually has very very little herd immunity. So you're going to see a big, big spike in influenza, and not just influenza, but all the other cold viruses. In other words, all the other illnesses are coming back for revenge picking onto Singapore and Singaporeans. So we need to defend ourselves, uh, not get ready, not just for another spike in COVID, but as well as influenza and other illnesses. So for one, get vaccinated for influenza too. Dr. Leong, thank you. That was infectious diseases specialist Dr. Leong Ho Nam from Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital.